important to include the third component, which is the virtual, along with uh, the artificial and along with the flesh. But how that mixture goes together in a cooperative versus a competitive way is hard to predict. It's very interesting. It's a great time to live in. But I'm anxious to wait 50 years to see what the answer is. Reality and virtual reality are beginning to merge. To understand how this will occur, we have to look at one more technology slated to overshadow all other branches of technology. It's nanotechnology, the means of getting control over matter, atom by atom. So what we're going to do is move this atom from this location here to a location right over here. We'll move it just along this path here. Now you gotta get excited about that. You just gotta get excited about that. Scientists are now able to grab one single atom and move it to another place. It's a small step for an atom, but a giant leap for mankind. If we start making things by building them atom by atom, we can make almost anything we want. Manufactured products are made from atoms, and the properties of those products depend on how the atoms are arranged. Now, today's manufacturing technologies arrange atoms very crudely and statistically. But in the future, with nanotechnology, we'll be able to arrange the fundamental building blocks of matter in precisely the patterns we want, very flexibly and very inexpensively. Nanotechnology will open vast opportunities for all other technologies, in particular for computing. When computer connections can be made by single atoms, computer power will increase enormously. Computers incredibly powerful that just would let us put into a single sugar cube a computer that was more powerful than all the computers in the world combined today. But there are many other fields in which nanotechnology will be applied. While at the end of the last millennium, most scientists believed that nanotechnology would remain science fiction, we now see its first applications already appearing on the market. So we now make materials which purify water, which generate electricity, which generate chemical energy. And our long-term research project is to build a, a system that processes information, kind of like an artificial neuron. You're going to start seeing systems and processes like that proliferate within the next 45 years, in which you're going to, you're going to be amazed constantly. This rotating dot here is the first real nano engine ever made, only a few atoms in size. I took the F1 ATPase and I stuck a little propeller on the top of it and made it spin around from one molecule. Well now I can take many thousands of these in complex systems like we have in our bodies and make them do more sophisticated things. The ultimate goal is to create robots as small as viruses, called nanobots. These nanobots will be more intelligent than today's computers. One possible set of applications is medical. Nanobots could be injected into the bloodstream as a kind of cleansing team to kill cancer cells, for example, or to carry out other kinds of maintenance work in the body, or even to modify the DNA code. It might seem that this is a very expensive technology, but in fact, the opposite is true. We will be able to program nanobots to reproduce themselves, just as all natural creatures do. They will then be able to grab material from their environment and use it for making copies of themselves. Well, the basic goal of nanotechnology is to build what's called an assembler. And this is simply a very small device that can make copies of itself. And it's a programmable device, so it can be programmed to build a wide range of useful things. Auto assemblers can be seen as a new form of life comparable to viruses or yeast cells. They can reproduce themselves and at the same time transform matter just as yeast cells change sugar into alcohol. The only difference is that these new creatures can be programmed to carry out whatever task we want them to. Change carbon into diamonds, perhaps, or create food. Molecular nanotechnology is 
to physical reality what computer programming is to virtual reality. I think that's a bit of an exaggeration, but gives the idea. Whereas computer programmers can program software to do what they want, molecular nanotechnology will allow us to change matter at the most fundamental level. It will allow us to build just about any kind of structure uh, to our exact specifications by moving individual atoms. This sounds like a world of magic, where all that we imagine becomes reality. But the role of the good fairy is taken over by robots so minuscule that we cannot see them. And instead of saying the magic word, we program them to grant all our wishes. The other side of this fairy tale, however, is what is called the Grey Goo Syndrome. Imagine that some nanobots are programmed for a terrorist action, or would simply tilt and start reproducing themselves endlessly. In a rapid chain reaction, the Earth would be reduced within 72 hours into a gray goo of swarming nanobots. Most scientists, however, stress that such a scenario is very unlikely. We will have nanotechnology to control nanotechnology. And it will also provide the ultimate escape route. We will be able to inject a certain number of nanobots into our bodies where they will locate our brain cells and copy their functioning. With no effort, we will get a hardware copy of our consciousness that will then send a software copy to a computer where more copies can be made or where our consciousness will be allowed to merge with other souls and software programs. Then we will be ready to leave this planet and start the exploration of the universe. What is our place in this magical world where everything can be transformed? How will people deal with such a future? Or is it something that by definition goes beyond our human capacities to understand? Something that only transhumans will be able to grasp? Will we stay as we are and watch with wonder from the sidelines? Or will we upload ourselves and participate in the world as super beings? Let yourself upload to a network of nanocomputers and let the wind carry you. It's important to recognize that the post-human epic is coming. It really is. Uh, it's what we want, and it's kind of, you can see it written in the pages of magazines. It's the word of the prophet is on the subway walls here. We really, really do want to violate human limits now, and we're getting closer and closer to the ability to do it. But it's also important to realize that this is not the end of history. It doesn't solve any of our other problems. It just creates new problems that are going to intensify. And there's going to be more than one kind of post-humanity. And the mere fact that you're no longer human doesn't mean you don't have the same personality problems that you did before. It doesn't liberate you from yourself. It probably makes you more than you were before, not less. You're not going to clank and beep like RoboCop. You're just going to have new abilities and new powers. and you know, dealing with power is troublesome. If you have more power, you have more responsibility, not less. 